Hello everybody, it's Louise Eddington, the Cosmic Owl of Cosmic Owl Astrology and Wisdom Weaver. And I'm here today to give you the week ahead transits from July the 28th through till August the 4th. But before I dive into the week ahead, I just want to make a small correction to my Leo New Moon video. And it's it's a small correction, but I referenced a past degree and transit incorrectly. So I always like to correct myself if I misspeak. So I, me I mentioned on this Leo New Moon that's coming up on August the 4th at 7.13 a.m., that the new moon is at the degree that Venus stationed direct at last September, that Vesta is at the degree of the Venus star point, which was when the sun and Venus met in the middle of the Venus retrograde at 20 Leo. So that started the Leo star point, morning star Venus. And Venus will be at 29 Leo. I mistakenly said that this is the degree that um, of the Venus star point from October 22nd, 2022. Well, it's not. <laughs> this is the degree of the August 17th, 2017 Great American Eclipse that was at 29 Leo that, you know, split the US in two physically and energetically. But it's also in a sextile aspect to 29 Libra, which was the Venus star point that began on October the 22nd, 2022. And, and I just wanted to point that out because it's activating both those times. So let's move on <laughs> to the week ahead. Well, we have a um, a week ahead that, you know, has not got a huge amount of big aspects. But of course, that does not mean that nothing is going on. So I do want to start by saying that we are in the waning moon. I'm recording this on Saturday, July the 27th, and we have the last quarter moon. So the week ahead is basically the last quarter moon, the waning phase, the releasing phase, the going within phase, the shedding phase. We're at a phase of adjustment. And this week we're leaving was one of great excitement, big change. We had, you know, the Capricorn full moon started the week and it kind of burst everything open. We've seen it in the collective with many things, of course, you know, in the US, we saw it with um, Biden dropping out and Kamala Harris kind of stepping up. And incidentally, I am unapologetically endorsing Kamala Harris. So, you know, every time I talk about it and um, and um, do videos, I get I lose a, a, few, a couple of followers or so and I always get the thumbs down. But I'll give you a hug because at this point, unfortunately, if you are not voting blue in this country, you are putting every marginalised group in danger. And uh, Trump has just said to a group of Christo nationalists that um, I love you, you Christians, and don't worry, get out and vote. And if you all vote, you won't have to vote again in four years' time. They're not hiding their agenda. And for whatever following I have, I will speak up for that. And in my video for about Kamala's uh, natal chart, I did say that this is just her natal chart when I said this is her time. I said this is her, this a natal chart is natal promise. I said there will be videos to come looking at times ahead and I will say that I have already briefly looked at them and I don't care if other astrologers kind of go you know it's not her time in 2025 of course she's going to face challenges if she, when she's elected because uh, the first year you know facing what we're facing they're probably going to contest the election uh, there's going to be all kinds of challenges 
to her and it's going to be tough. And the election itself is going to be tough. But that doesn't mean her natal chart is not showing that now is she's stepping into her natal promise, okay? And also we all are in this co-creative place. Energy is in fluid. If anybody predicts exact predictions, don't trust them, you know, because astrology as a predictive tool, there are predictive techniques, but there's, um, I don't do exact predictions because we are in this co-creative energetic state with the cosmos and each other. So anyway, there's my rant. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to the week ahead. And really, you know, there is, you know, I look at the aspects and there's not any, you know, stand out aspects coming up in the week ahead. But we are moving towards uh, a Mercury retrograde. And I will look at all the major aspects there are. But we're also moving towards the new moon that is early on Sunday the 4th. So that'll be at the start of next week's aspect. So I've mentioned that already. So I'm actually going to go through the aspects, but I'm going to point out a couple of things that are really echoing um, some past transits and most especially, oh, my God, the Venus retrograde from last summer. And I do want to say that I am putting together the level one Venus star point class that I'll be teaching. I'm going to, um, well, you'll hear about the details when I offer it because it's time to do it. <laughs> so the week ahead, here we are. We start on the week, um, on, well, I've put this chart for 12 a.m., July the 28th. We can see that we start with the moon in Taurus, and we have the moon in Taurus for most of the weekend, which is pleasant. Moon in Taurus kind of settles us down, invites us to get rooted in our bodies, get grounded, get more centered. I've, I've loved the excitement of the past week. But as we move into the waning week of this energy, it is time to kind of settle down, get rooted in that excitement and get to work. <laughs> As well, of course, Mercury has just moved into Virgo at the start of the week. Virgo is analysis and work and details and service. So now it's time to take that excitement and get to work. That doesn't mean don't still feel excited about what's happening, but it's time to kind of, you know, get in that focus. And incidentally, you know, that call I was on, um, the women for uh, Kamala Harris has now raised over 11 million dollars. You know, this has really ignited something. But anyway, we'll move on to this week. So that's kind of where we start the week. Um, I will do it. Is there anything else I want to say? Well, Eris and Chiron have just stationed retrograde. And so we'll look at a couple of aspects to those. But I do want to mention that Venus in Leo is at 20 degrees as we start the week, which is the Venus star point from last August the 13th. So things that began during that Venus retrograde when Venus was morning star, which is the light bringer, the action, the kind of more warrior kind of Venus are being um, activated again. And so she's at that point. So there's a couple of other things I will mention as we go through the week, but um, I perhaps save those back to the end of the video. So anyway, there's no major aspects on um, July. Uh, the um, 28th. So we're getting a real kind of opportunity to kind of slow it down a little bit in the waning moon with the moon in Taurus to just go, all right, settle down now and get to work. But, you know, don't don't yuck people's yum if they're still excited because, you know, nothing wrong with that too. We need people to be sparked up and ignited right now. 
So on July the 29th, on Monday, again, we have no major aspects at all. In my daily posts for paid subscribers on my Substack, I go through all the lunar aspects and things. But we will have the moon in Taurus for most of the day. The moon will stay in Taurus until 5.27 p.m. And then we'll move into Gemini. And so Gemini is a bit more youth, a bit more excitement, a bit more kind of conversation. So the chatter will pick up a little bit again with Gemini, especially with the aspects. And I do also, um, um, for pay for free subscribers on my Substack, list all these aspects on a weekly post. I put this video out on YouTube and I post it in my weekly Substack post with some written detail about it as well. Because we all like to, um, you know, take things in in different ways. So there's a link to my Substack in uh, the description. And then on Tuesday, um, July the 30th. So Tuesday, July the 30th, the moon will be in Gemini all day, which is, you know, pretty good for a working week, I think you know, lots of ideas, lots of thinking. The Mercury more rules um, uh, Gemini and Virgo. So there's a lot of detail, getting to work, putting patterns together, analysis, thinking over kind of things as well. But the first big aspect of the week, in my opinion, is on July the 30th. And I'm going to take us to that one. Okay. So Venus will... Um, trine do, do, Chiron. So on July the 30th, on Tuesday in the afternoon, Venus by that point has moved to 23 degrees. Remember, she started the week at that degree of her star point from last year. And then Venus will trine Chiron. And Venus made all these aspects to these planets during her retrograde last year. So there is echoes of what's going on through that retrograde. I know it was a major in retrograde in many ways. And I talked about it being the rise of the feminine, the rise of women, I, um, and rise of kind of the heart and rise of people stepping into heart-led leadership. And we're seeing it in many ways. And also the Aries journey has been about people kind of really kind of getting into their self and standing up and starting to take a stand. So these aspects are echoing that and increasing that and increasing that passion and increasing that desire to take the lead. Conversely, of course, it's also Chiron is the wound and Chiron is still stationed. Chiron and Eris have just stationed retrograde as we start this week. And so, uh, you know, we're addressing a lot of wounds that are opening up in so many ways, especially in the collective. So that's the first big aspect of the day on Tuesday, the 30th. Now, just moving forward to Wednesday, the 31st. The moon will be still in Gemini until 11, 19 at night, always Eastern time. I find a time and date, you know, a converter to move to your own time zone because I have to pick a time zone. So um, and then on um, Wednesday, July the 31st, the sun, we still we have the sun now in Libra, in, sorry, in Leo. It's Leo season. And the sun joins in these fiery trines. So we're seeing a lot of inspiration and a lot of fired up energy, even though things are kind of getting a little bit more settled. So the sun on this day is going to trine. Yeah, there we go. Oh, no, no, no. So back to a bit earlier in the day. July the 31st, Wednesday, the sun in Leo moves to eight degrees and aspects the North Node in Aries. Again, people are feeling very driven and very inspired. But remember, everybody is feeling very driven and inspired to 
be very direct, very clear, and lead from what their heart desires. So, but it is definitely also about the rise of the divine feminine um, uh, and seeing with the eye of the heart that's really coming into the collective in many ways. Because, of course, this means as well that this, when the sun aspects the nodes, the sun will also sextile the south node, which is in Libra, which is a Venus guided sign. But it's about justice, but it's also about not compromising anymore. OK, and not kind of just giving in anymore. So everybody's get feeling that, too. And then at 11.19 p.m. Eastern on Wednesday, July the 31st, the moon will move into Cancer. So let's move on to Thursday and happy August, everybody. My God, the year's going by, by so fast as always. Now the moon will be in Cancer all day. And I do quickly want to mention that, you know, we're almost at the new moon here. So here, look at this, you know, the moon is about to be 30 degrees away from the sun. So we're really in the balsamic phase of letting go and going within and starting to set seeds of intention for the new uh, lunar cycle. But all in the moons in Cancer or Capricorn and around this area of the chart, it's always out of bounds as well. So we'll be feeling that kind of eccentric kind of shift. Uh, and there's a lot of kind of that eccentric energy that I'll be talking about over time. So on Thursday, August the 1st, the first big aspect, and I well, 447, yeah, I go forward. So Venus, again, is now going to um, trine. So uh, Venus is now at 25 degrees Leo. She's whizzing through the sign of Leo because she's uh, moving really fast now that she has um, come out from behind the sun she's approaching her first gatus evening star she's becoming more and more visible as evening star which is the love goddess energy of the gemini star point okay so this is much more um receptive and much more wanting to be more healing and so on and so forth but venus um at this time um, trines Eris, which is also just stationed retrograde like Chiron, as I mentioned at the start. Fire, fire again. So we've definitely still got this inner fire, this desire to, you know, really kind of be the change that we want to see in the world. On, But everybody wants it. So, you know, those you um, disagree with will also... Um, be feeling that as well so they're more fired up as well just remember that so mars the other aspect on um on this day is mars um in mars is the aries guide so the guide for the aries north node and remember the sun just aspected the nodes mars will late at night on thursday august the first mars is in gemini which is all about communication and ideas and chatter and talk, will also aspect the nodes. So even though we're in the waning phase, don't expect the big chatter and kind of um, um, different perspectives kind of energy to go away any soon. And don't expect um, that people on, all people will be, um, uh, chatting and uh, and putting their passionate opinion and views out there quite loudly so it's going to all be still quite loud <laughs> so yeah all of that so on to Friday and Friday moon will be in cancer um, all day Friday or August the 2nd but the last big aspect of the week and then I do want to show you a couple of um, kind of astounding kind of lesser aspects that are tied into that last Venus um, uh, retrograde as well so a bit earlier in the day 
on August the 2nd, 9.26 a.m. Eastern. Venus has, by this point of the week, reached 26 degrees of Leo, and she will square Uranus. Now, Venus squared Uranus three times during her retrograde as well, as well as trining Chiron and as well as trining Eris. And, um, well, this means that Venus on Friday, on her day, on Venus Day, <laughs> is square Uranus in one of Venus signs and Algol is there as well. So that we saw what the um, Mars, Uranus, Algol conjunction did. You know, there was the shooting at the Trump rally. I don't believe for a minute he got shot in the ear because, you know, if you got shot in the ear, even a graze, yeah, I think you're not going to have your big sanitary pad off in um, a couple of days with a big high velocity bullet. I'm not an expert on guns, but I don't believe it. We've seen no medical um, report. Do I believe there was a shooting? Yes, I do. Do I believe that he, that was what happened to him? No, I think it's more likely a nick from flying debris. There was other people injured from flying debris. But anyway, <laughs> Venus is gonna square Uranus. And I think there could be something come out about what happened around that time. Also the um, Mars, Uranus, Algol conjunction, of course, Uranus is sticking around Algol, the so-called demon star for a while, was opposing Biden's son and things. I thought he might withstand it, but no, 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 he didn't. He stood down. That's that's fine. Again, I told you, astrology as a predictive art is often wrong as it is right. Okay, so because energy is mutable and we are all in relationship. But anyway, Uranus is radical change and radical changes within you and within the collective that began last summer during the Venus retrograde. If you were in my class, you would have looked at it in detail. I will be um, coming back. Something is going to change that began during then. And it could be within you. I feel it within me because of various things that happen. But it's also going to happen out there. Because as within, so without. So that's the biggest aspect, in my opinion, to look for this week. And it's also happening, you know, right as we're about to have this Leo new moon, where um, all those degrees are highlighted again. And that's also harking back to the great American eclipse in August of 2017. So radical, radical change is coming. And I still think it's about women taking on or the divine feminine rising up and taking on not just not just here in the US, but everywhere. OK, about, you know, rising up and saying we're not letting this kind of energy take over here. All right. So on to Saturday, August the 3rd. No major aspects. We have the moon in Cancer until 7.09 a.m. And then the uh, moon will move into Leo on Saturday. And then we really start to feel the new moon. We'll be in the new moon phase. And we started with that new moon again. And I've done the other new moon video that you can look at. <laughs> but before I go, um, I do want to, oh, and I forgot to pull my three cards for the week. So I'm going to do that while we talk. <laughs> And um, so uh, Venus, because I'm talking about harking back to last summer's Venus retrograde, we end the week. So let me um, actually edit this and go to 11.59 p.m. The end of the week from our perspective of... Oh. 11.59 p.m. All right. So uh, we end the week. Venus will be at 28 Leo, which is the actual degree that she stationed retrograde at last summer. 
on July the 22nd, which was the Magdalene feast day. Okay, so, um, and Vesta is already at 20 degrees, the degree of the star point. The sun is already at 12 degrees, which is the uh, degree that um, um, Venus stationed direct at in September. So we're already by the end of the week at midnight um, activating those degrees. But I want to draw some lines. And um, so they're, they're not going to take long. I just want to show you something else that is activating something from that's ongoing, big of the big collective moves. So Venus is going to make a quincunx at right after this, at the start of next week to Neptune. And then when she moves into Virgo, she will quincunx Pluto. Now, Neptune and Pluto are in this long going, ongoing sextile to each other. And those two are the parts, are one of the big parts of the big, big shifts that we're going through. On Monday, I'm recording this on Saturday. On Monday the 29th, I'm going to re record a joint vlog with um, um, the astrologer, Steve Judd. Love him. And um, and so uh, you will hear more about my thoughts on that and his thoughts as well on all the big shifts that we've got coming, which are just, they really are, you know, I know it seems like an over, oh, my, I'll, I'm my point for that in a second. It seems like an overused word, but they are unprecedented. But anyway, I've, I've lost the lines, but it, this is a finger of fate, a finger of God. Um, and Venus in Leo. Feminine, Leo rising was at the crux of that Venus retrograde and the Venus star point, and that's being activated again now. And here we have a woman, nominee, anyway, who is a Gemini star point under the new Gemini star point. Can't make it up. Anyway. <laughs> so when I say it's her time, it's all connected to that, right? So, you know, that's astrologically, even though my emotions, somebody told me my emotions are colouring my view. Well, they are. I'm very excited. We're all, you know, human. But I also think it is her time. Whether that's going to be easy or not is a different thing. Hmm. All right. So let's pull some cards for the week and and then um, I will um, I usually share a picture, but no, I'm gonna I'm just gonna share these cards because um, you know these cards are not shiny. They do um, kind of show up really clearly on the screen. So I'm actually just gonna hold them up one by one. and I'm using the light Sears tarot. okay, so I pull three cards and uh, the first card really kind of for the start of the week kind of reflects this steadying um, energy after the excitement of the week how it could feel and um, so here we go here is the ten of swords reversed and the ten of swords reversed really kind of is about um, feeling a bit rock bottom, feeling a bit um, going into a bit of lack and helplessness and feeling some loss. It can also indicate recovery, you know, because there's been a lot of loss and excitement this week. There's been a big mix of that. So you may, with the energy kind of shifting out of that initial kind of blast of what blew open, um, on the full moon last weekend you may feel some of this and Taurus takes you into it so make sure you're doing your self-care all right so that's uh, that's that one so then the next card that we have in the light seers tarot and if you wonder what I'm doing I like to look at the decks um 
uh, meaning, you know, each deck kind of has a different flavor and I'm kind of getting uh, used to this deck a little bit. So the, the, the rest of the week, the middle of the week, we get the five of wands. So this is kind of, you know, upright is kind of like, you know, climbing up to the top, kind of pushing each other up. Uh, but this is reversed again, because the upright can mean actually conflict and competition, but also being pushed by others, lifting up. But this one is a call to collaborate. This is um, a call to not be overly competitive and, you know, uh, but also um, a tendency, it can be a warning about any conflict avoidance. And this makes me think of the aspects to the nodes because Libra South Node can be very conflict averse. And I think we have to be prepared for conflict um, this week. And the reversed is saying to find your kind of people and find your your collaborators, but avoid in-group fighting and arguments. OK, so it can be a warning of that there could be as well in-group um, um, arguments. Oh, say, so, OK, so and the last card of the week. And it, this feels very apt to my mind for... Um, for the energy of uh, of this week as we go in towards the new moon, we get another reverse card. So we get the Ace of Cups. And of course, cups are emotions. And here's the Ace of Cups reversed. OK, so you can see this. This is a call to my mind to do more self-love and more self-care and making sure you're not reversed repressing your emotions to the person who told me I was letting my emotions get in the way of my videos. I'm not going to repress my emotions. Um, and this is about opening up to the possibility of love and that expressing those emotions is okay. So there you go. There's the cards for the week. Uh, it's I, I do think that Venus where Uranus at the end of the week could bring some very big inner ahas, inner awakenings, um, maybe some shocks, surprises and things. So really take that last card to, to heart, by this one, and do your self-care, your self-love, and, and get into your heart and open it up. Okay, so much love to you. I'll see you next time. Bye.